This is a presentation for the Winnipeg Philatelic Society, Western Canada's oldest stamp club. And it's got a couple of new ways to identify stamps. I had done uh, indicated before how you could identify a stamp based on some of the words on the stamp if it doesn't have a country name, but how the words on the stamp could be used to help you identify a stamp. Now, this is going to use your cell phone and Google or just use Google on a computer. And it will help you do the thing that you did before to find the country the stamp comes from if there's no country name on it. But the other problem is once you've figured out the country name, if you know or can guess the country, how do you find where it is in the catalog? Because often in the catalog, if they have a series of stamps, all of which look different, they only have one of the pictures. And so this can be a way to find out where the stamp is in the catalog. So with your cell phone. Now here's a stamp and we have some hints. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce the Russian. Neutmapka maybe is postage stamp in Russian. But when we look in the catalog under Russia or the USSR, it's not there. Now we also notice up at the top there appears to be Arabic script and the the currency is on the right hand side at the bottom there in Arabic script. Um, but at the bottom I think it's acrylic script um, and on the left side there we have the value of the stamp also in I think acrylic. So what do we do? Well, we're trying to find out, and I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but that's what the country name is in acrylic. So take a picture with your cell phone. Or in this case, because it was very small and difficult to get in close enough and take a picture with my cell phone, I scanned it and enlarged it, and then I took a picture with my cell phone. And I used the Google Translate feature to translate the words. And on my cell phone, it's there, translate text with your camera. So when I'm in the grocery store and trying to buy Chinese tea, and the only text on the can of tea is Mandarin, and I want to find out whether it's jasmine tea or Ling Chung tea or whatever it is, I use my cell phone, take a picture of it, and translate it and find out. Anyway, when I did that, up comes Azerbaijan Socialist Republic. Now, one of the words got missed. It's actually Azerbaijan Soviet Socialist Republic. So, ha, we know the country it's from. Go to the catalog, and it's right at the front under Azerbaijan. And it says, the catalog says this is from 1922, which was the year of the formation of USSR. It's got number 22, and it has a catalog value of 35 cents. A whole lot more fun than 35 cents to identify. So that's how I found out what that stamp was. Even though it was only worth 35 cents, it was a lot of fun. Now the other thing you can do is you can use images.google.com. And again, scan and save the stamp image. And open images.google.com. And click search the search by image icon, which is a multicolored square with a dot in it. Click upload a file and do so and suggestions will appear. So let's try that on a couple of stamps. Here is a stamp. It's got no country name. It's got lots of words. Um, free mark gives you a hint that it's German. Fenning is a German currency, but it doesn't give me a country. Um, so it could be a German stamp and we could go look it up under Germany in the catalog not going to find it there. There were lots and lots of different German states. So which one is it? Or is it could be another country too. So we go through that process, scan it and up comes Württemberg. And it's got 031, which means it's an official stamp, not a regular postage stamp. And it's got an image from hip stamp. And so bang, we find what country it is. And we even find the catalog number. That's great. Now here's an overprinted stamp. Um, now I'm presuming that that Arabic script um, 
tells me the name of the country. I'm not actually sure that it does. Um, it's got a value of five para, and that's a former currency of Turkey. So it could be a Turkish stamp, but I'm guessing that it got overprinted and it's a Turkish state or official stamp or something. Now we take a look at the stamp and the color is kind of faded and the corners are kind of off, perfs are kind of off, so it's not the best copy. But if we go through the process, we scan and we find from, this is from Wikipedia, that this is an 1866 Egyptian stamp. It is Egypt's got number one. It has a catalog value of $30. We can see what a nice bright green color it should have been. It isn't anymore. Maybe it's worth $5 or maybe less, um, but kind of an interesting stamp. And the first Egyptian stamp. Um, and we learn a little bit of history because Egypt was part of Turkey until 1914. So this is in fact a Turkish stamp that has been overprinted for use in Egypt. And Scott catalog considers it to be the first Egyptian stamp. Um, so again, that's kind of neat. Now here's another stamp. Um, pretty sure that's China. Pretty sure those are Chinese characters. With a little bit of practice, you will be able to distinguish Chinese stamps, Japanese stamps, and Korean stamps because the, um, the, the characters are slightly different. And if you're really good at Mandarin, you will see that very last symbol in the sort of the semicircle there, the square with a line through it. That's the Mandarin for China. So pretty good guess that it's a Chinese stamp looks Chinese. Um, so we go through that process, but where is it in the catalog? You can spend a long time fumbling through the catalog because I don't know who these three gentlemen are. Um, if I were an expert on China, perhaps I would, but I don't. So I'm going to fumble through the catalog for a long time. So go through the process and from Amazon, it tells us it's a 1921 Chinese stamp. It is got 243. It has a catalog value of a dollar and 25 cents. So maybe it's worth 25 cents because it's a bit beat up and it's a bit heavily canceled and there's a corner off and there's some perfs kind of short on the bottom. Um, but you could spend a long time after you've concluded that it was a Chinese stamp and you could even give up and start looking through Japan or Korea or a bunch of other places and conclude that uh, and not be able to find it. So a really quick way of finding out where that stamp is in the catalog. So what we can do, how we can now identify stamps with the computer. With your cell phone and Google Translate, you can translate a country name. So if the country name is there in Cyrillic script or Arabic script or Chinese or Japanese script, perhaps Google Translate will tell you the country name and then you can proceed to look it up in the catalog. Um, with images.google.com, you can actually go farther than that. You can uh, find a country for a stamp with no name or even uh, a stamp that does have a name. It says it's from Paraguay or Mexico, but you can't find it in the catalog. Um, so you can go through that process with images.google.com a little bit of luck, you will find out where it is in the catalog, and then you can go say, oh, there, I should have been able to find that. Now, it may have been more fun to do this without this computerized scanning ability, but it uh, sure is a lot faster. So, thanks for listening.